We like to think most people we meet are honest, but also know that out there there are some people who only think of themselves and are happy to cheat, steal, and scam others for money. If you're smart, you can usually spot a scammer pretty easily. That guy from Nigeria emailing to ask you to take care of his spare five million dollars. Yeah, that's a scam right there. But some some scammers are geniuses and have done incredible things. From the woman who only used cash to the guy who sold the bridge over and over again, here's 20 horrible scammers caught red-handed. <laughs> Number 20. Hannah Sorokin Anna Sorokin is a con artist and fraudster of German citizenship who was born in Russia. Sorokin reported to be a wealthy German heir under the name Anna Delvey between 2013 and 2017. Sorokin purported to be a wealthy German heir under the name Anna Delvey between 2013 and 2017. She was arrested in 2017 after scamming or willfully misled large financial institutions institutions, banks, hotels, and acquaintances in the United States for a total of $275,000 in the United States. Sorokin went to London after graduating from school in June 2011 to attend Central St. Martins, an art school, but dropped out and returned to Germany. Sorokin then moved to Paris, where she worked as an intern for Purple, a French fashion magazine, earning roughly 400 pounds per month, Sorokin visited New York City in mid-2013 for New York Fashion Week. She chose to stay in New York since she found it easier to establish friends there than Paris, and she transferred to Purple's New York office for a short period. Sorokin came up with the concept for the Anna Delvey Foundation, a private members club and art foundation, after leaving Purple and tried to successfully to raise the funds from rich members of the city's social scene. Sorokin created bogus bank statements and other financial papers claiming to have 60 million pounds in Swiss bank accounts that she couldn't access because they were held in trust and she was in the United States. This woman paid everything with cash for years. Then it became apparent why. In a sting operation, Sorokin was apprehended on October 3rd, 2017, Sorokin was sentenced 4 to 12 years in state prison on May 9th, 2019. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. George C. Parker Sells Brooklyn Bridge George C. Parker was an American con artist best known for selling the Brooklyn Bridge on several occasions. He made a fortune by selling property he didn't own to unsuspecting immigrants, frequently New York's iconic monuments. Several of his deals included the Brooklyn Bridge, and they were all based on the idea of the buyer controlling bridge access. As they attempted to build toll booths, Police pulled many of his victims off the bridge and arrested him. Parker was born to Irish parents in New York City. He was a high school graduate with four brothers and three sisters. Other major monuments he used in his schemes included the original Madison Square Garden, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Grant's Tomb, and the Statue of Liberty, in addition to the Brooklyn Bridge. Parker used a variety of sales techniques. He pretended to be Grant's grandson while selling Grant's tomb, and he set up a bogus office to handle his real estate scams. He presented compelling falsified paperwork as proof that he was the rightful owner of the property he was trying to sell. He also sold a number of popular plays and performances that he had no legal right to. Parker was convicted three times of fraud after one arrest in 1908. He 
quietly strolled out of the courthouse, donning a sheriff's hat and coat that had been placed on the table by a sheriff who had stepped in from the cold outdoors. On December 17, 1928, he was condemned to a mandatory life sentence at Sing Sing Prison for his fourth conviction. Number 18. Charles Ponzi Charles Ponzi was an Italian con artist and swindler who worked in the United States and Canada. Charles Ponzi, Carlo, and Charles P. Bianchi are some of his aliases. He was born and raised in Italy, and his money-making strategy made him a notorious swindler in North America in the early 1920s. He guaranteed clients a 50% profit in 45 days, or a 100% profit in 90 days by arbitraging the purchase of reduced postal reply coupons in other countries and redeeming them at face value in the United States. In actuality, Ponzi was paying earlier investors with the later investors' money. While Ponzi did not originate this form of fraudulent investment scam, it got so associated with them that it is now known as the Ponzi scheme. His plan lasted more than a year before failing, losing his investors $20 million, $258 million in 2022. Ponzi was charged with 86 counts of mail fraud in two federal indictments and risked life in jail. Ponzi pled guilty on November 1, 1920, at the insistence of his wife. Ponzi was charged with 86 counts of mail fraud in two federal indictments and risked life in jail. Ponzi pled guilty on November 1, 1920, at the insistence of his wife. Number 17. Joe Low. Lo Tayek Joe, sometimes known as Joe Lo, is a Malaysian businessman who is wanted by foreign authorities in connection with the 1MDB controversy. He is accused of orchestrating the enormous fraud, which authorities say was a conspiracy to divert 4.5 billion US dollars from 1MDB to Lo's personal accounts. He is the recipient of a slew of discretionary trust assets allegedly derived from Malaysia's 1MDB fund, according to the US authorities. Lo is said to be based in China, where he travels widely across major cities in stealth. The One Malaysia Development Burhad scandal refers to a massive corruption, bribery, and money laundering scheme that began in Malaysia in 2009, but quickly extended throughout the world. The news source Sarawak reports and then the international press brought it to the attention of a worldwide audience in 2014, one of the world's largest financial scandals, the 1MDB controversy, has been regarded as one of the world's greatest financial scandals in 2015. Malaysia's then Prime Minister, Najib Razak, was accused of funneling around 7 million US dollars from one Malaysia development Burhad, a government-run strategic development firm, into his personal accounts. Malaysians were outraged at the dismissal of the charges. Lo was reportedly staying in Macau, in a house owned by a senior member of the Chinese Communist Party, according to Al Jazeera in November 2020. Number 16. Couple allegedly milks $31 million from fake coupons. Officials said that an American woman who raised foraging coupons to an art form was sentenced to 12 years in jail for generating $31 million in losses to multiple firms. Lori Ann Talens, 41, and her husband Pacifico Talens, a co-defendant, constructed what may be one of the biggest counterfeit coupon schemes in history, according to the case's prosecutors. The woman's abilities were so so deftly used, authorities claimed that the coupons she created were virtual.
virtually indistinguishable from genuine coupons and took counterfeit coupon experts to positively confirm them as counterfeit. She made Frankenstein coupons at home by putting together product photos, corporate logos, and valid barcodes on her computer. According to the records, the only suspicious aspect was the amount of the decrease, which was equivalent to or larger than the worth of the item. She recruited over 2,000 clients online and sold her fraudulent promotional vouchers across the United States between 2017 and 2020. Under the alias Master Chef, generating approximately $400,000. However, the damage to companies was estimated to be worth $31 million. The suspect spouse, who was in charge of sending the vouchers, received a seven-year and three-month jail term. Coupons for retail purchases are extremely popular in the United States, with dedicated websites, fan groups, and even a reality TV program airing in 2011. Number 15. Don Bennett the Securities and Exchange Commission has accused financial counselor Don Bennett, who is renowned for her syndicated radio show, Financial Myth Busting with Don Bennett, with conducting a $20 million Ponzi scam. Bennett, who was excluded from the financial services business in July 2016 for inflating the value of her firm's client assets, is accused of misusing investor cash for company objectives, personal costs, including including a luxury suite at Dallas Cowboys games, and to compensate previous investors. Bennett's plan entailed selling $20 million in notes issued by a premium sportswear company in Washington, D.C. to mostly elderly and financially inexperienced investors. She inflated the security of the notes and the performance of her organization, claiming that it could provide yearly returns of 15%, according to the lawsuit. In a separate instance, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Maryland filed criminal charges against Bennett, according to the SEC. According to authorities, she spent a large portion of the money received from consumers between December 2014 and April 2017 on personal things including a $500,000 suite to watch Dallas Cowboy games. They alleged she spent $800,000 on priests in India to execute rituals aimed at warding off SEC and FBI investigators, as well as astrological stones and hoodoo charms in her effort to thwart them. Number 14. Married Couple Steals $4.5 Billion in Bitcoin Heist the U.S. Department of Justice detained a married couple for allegedly attempting to launder $4.5 billion in stolen Bitcoin. The Bitcoin was taken for the first time in 2016, following a huge exchange breach. At the time, at least 120,000 Bitcoin were taken, with a value of $65 million. In a press statement, U.S. Justice Department officials dubbed it a record-breaking amount of stolen cryptocurrency and stated they'd seized at least $3.6 billion in cryptocurrency linked to that hack, which they will now attempt to return to its rightful owners. Morgan, by the way, has a sizable following on social media. She went by the Mongol conqueror Genghis Khan's moniker, Razzel Khan, which she said on her website meant the same as him, but with more pizzazz. She also actively wrote on tips to protect your business from cyber criminals, according to Reuters, which included an interview with a Bitcoin exchange owner about how to prevent fraud. According to Reuters, after transferring Bitcoin to their crypto wallet, the pair spent the money on gold, NFTs, and a $500 Walmart gift card. To launder the stolen Bitcoin, the accused reportedly divided transactions into thousands of smaller transactions, converted them to other forms of crypto, such as Monero, and then sold them on the dark net market. Number 13. Man swaps $28,000 diamond with fake in jewelry store. 
A guy allegedly walked out of a Cobb County jewelry store with a $28,000 diamond. Employees at Smyrna's D. Geller & Son told reporters that they believe the man is no amateur. While standing feet away from an employee, he replaced the actual diamond with a fake. According to staff, the man spent two hours in the store earlier that day before returning after closing. To claim he wanted to buy the engagement diamond, he seen earlier. Assistant manager Candy Johnson said that he informed the employees he needed to go outside for a smoke right before he was about to pay. We realized he had swapped our two-carat diamond for a cubic zirconia about as soon as he left, Johnson explained. According to Johnson, he was well gone by the time her crew went outside to look for him. It's definitely a stomach-churning experience, she said. Smyrna police have obtained footage from the store security cameras. Employees claim, however, that the man made the switch in a place where there were no above cameras. At one point, he was able to perform some kind of sleight of hand. He was unquestionably a pro, she stated. When the Jewelers Security Alliance in New York was contacted, the employees noted that the suspect's face was recognizable. They showed Johnson a photo of a man who looks to be the same man standing outside of Virginia Diamond Store, where he's suspected of committing the same crime. Employees informed Johnson that they hadn't seen the individual in the video before. He may or may not live in Georgia. Number 12. Turkish man stole more than $55 million from ATMs worldwide. Her John Findikalu, 36, is the mastermind behind one of the most complex bank robberies in history. They had it mapped out like any well-organized plan, and they knew Broadway had a large number of ATMs in close proximity to each other. An investigator added, Findikalu hacked into the systems of foreign banks from Turkey, stole account information, and then supplied ATM numbers to criminal groups he had recruited online all around the world. He also abolished all account withdrawal restrictions. Gang members went to work, striking machinery from Tokyo to London to New York, as witnessed on CCTV cameras. According to Secret Service agent Ken Primo, the ATMs were emptied using only one card. There are several transactions. Insert your card, pin it, and remove your limit, he continued. Fendi Kalu, who was in Turkey at the time, was key keeping an eye on everything. He was watching to see who was withdrawing how much money, so he could figure out how much he was supposed to get back, Primo explained. In February 2011, the first hit brought in $10 million from 15,000 transactions in 18 countries. In December 2012, the second hit was made. Thieves executed 5,000 transactions, totaling $5 million in 20 countries. In 2015, he was extradited to the United States, where he would serve the next eight years in prison before being deported. Number 11. Feds bust a $300 million U.S. call center scam in India. Federal prosecutors unveiled an indictment accusing 56 people in a massive fraud operation in which defendants pretended to be IRS agents and immigration officials to steal more than $3 million from thousands of naive victims to pay off bogus deportation warrants and tax obligations. The scam, which relied on personal information collected from data brokers to target at least 15,000 victims with threats of penalties, deportation or incarceration if they did not pay the necessary fees, used a network of telephone call centers situated in India. The money was reportedly laundered through groups of U.S. co-conspirators utilizing wire transfers and debit cards in the hundreds of cases where victims agreed to settle the bogus accounts. According to federal officials, the co-conspirators utilized so-called hawala transfers in which money is transmitted 
worldwide outside of the conventional banking system to divert extorted payments to accounts owned by Americans. The conspirators reportedly retained a portion of the revenues for themselves in exchange for their participation in the transfer, according to the indictment. Prosecutors say that a contact center extorted $12,300 from an 85-year-old lady in San Diego after threatening her with arrest. Unless she settled false tax charges, a U.S.-based suspect reportedly loaded a debit card in the amount of the payment to purchase money orders in Frisco, Texas, on the same day the payment was made. Number 10. Matthew Cox Matt Cox is a former mortgage broker and acknowledged mortgage fraudster from the United States. Cox, who is also a true crime novelist, authored an unpublished manuscript called The Associates in which the protagonist travels across the nation to commit a mortgage scam identical to the one he committed. Cox forged paperwork to make it look that he owned property, then acquired various mortgages for five to six times the value of the property. He amassed millions millions of dollars in this way, with estimates ranging from $5 million to $25 million. Cox's first conviction was for mortgage fraud in 2002, when he was sentenced to probation. He was then sacked from his job as a mortgage broker in a business in Tampa, Florida. Following that incident, he established a career as a determined criminal in Central Florida before abandoning the state when his actions were exposed. His crime spree spanned the southern and southwestern United States, placing him on the U.S. Secret Service's most wanted list. He was supported by a number of female accomplices, some of whom are already in prison or have previously done time for their roles in his fraudulent mortgage schemes. On November 16, 2006, Cox was arrested. He was charged with 42 offenses and faced a maximum term of 125 years in jail, but he agreed to a plea deal that reduced his sentence to 54 years. Number 9. Manfred Schmeider – The Story of a German Con Man Manfred Schmeider and Klaus Kleiser founded Flotex to sell and rent equipment that employed a proprietary technology leased from America that, according to the company, allowed utility companies to drill and run wires and cables without having to dig up the ground above, substantially decreasing interruption. Initially, Flotex gathered funds from investors and banks in a legal manner. When the technology proved impractical, Schmeider resorted to deception, fabricating sales numbers and misrepresenting the number of units it possessed by a factor of 10. He then utilized the falsified figures to borrow additional money from banks and leasing businesses, frequently changing the license plates on the machines to deceive banks and auditors. Some of the money went toward interest payments, while the remainder was spent on various residences across the world, a fleet of expansive automobiles, and even a helicopter to go to work, he was dubbed the Sheik of Karlsruhe. Schmeider's commercial success and costly parties ensured that inquiries made by tax officials and prosecutors as early as 1996 went unanswered for several years. However, by the year 2000, Flotex's interest payments on the debts he had taken out had grown so big that he was unable to repay them. In February 2000, Schmeider was arrested on suspicion of money laundering his company went bankrupt and he was sentenced to up to 12 years in jail. Number 8. Jim Bakker and his wife Tammy Faye Jim Bakker, a televangelist, has been charged with mail and wire fraud as well as conspiring to mislead the public. When it was revealed that Bakker had sex with former church secretary Jessica Hahn, the case against the founder of Praise the Lord Ministries and three of his subordinates burst in the news. Bakker and Hahn had a sexual encounter in a Florida hotel room on December 6, 1980. Bakker finally paid Hahn almost 
almost $350,000 to be silent. Despite the fact that they already each offered conflicting tales about what transpired, the controversy helped bring down the whole PTL ministry when the deal became public. Han, who said she didn't want to be in the spotlight, became a household name in a matter of days. She modeled for Playboy, authored a book about her connection with Bakker, and even lived in the Playboy house for a while. At the time of Bakker's indictment, Han was a radio broadcaster in Phoenix, Arizona. He went on to become a regular on Howard Stern's radio program and starred in rock music videos. Tammy Faye was unable to defend the ministry against federal allegations that Heritage USA's financing was obtained by deceiving its viewers and contributors. Despite the lack of sufficient evidence, Jim Bakker was convicted and sentenced to 45 years in jail in 1986. He was released in 1994 when his sentence was reduced to eight years. Number 7. Ivan Boski Insider Trading Scandal Ivan Boski is a former American stock trader who rose to prominence after playing a key part in the insider trading scandal that rocked the country in the mid-1980s. He was accused with insider trading and pleaded guilty, receiving a record punishment of $100 million, three years in jail, and becoming an informant. Boski agreed to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit violations of the federal securities laws with the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York in 1986, Boskai acquired shares for businesses he was linked with, using inside information given by two investment bankers, Robert Wilkes and Ira Sokolow. Despite the fact that this type of insider trading was prohibited, rules forbidding it were rarely implemented until Boski was charged. Boski worked with the SEC and provided information on other cases including that of billionaire Michael Milken, Boski received a three-and-a-half-year jail sentence and a $100 million fine as part of a plea deal. He was released after two years, but he was barred from dealing with securities for the rest of his life. He was imprisoned at the Lompoc Federal Prison Camp in California near the Vandenberg Air Force Base. Number 6. Jordan Belfort becomes the Wolf of Wall Street. Jordan Belfort is a convicted criminal, entrepreneur, speaker, and author from the United States. He pleaded guilty to fraud and related crimes in 1999 in connection with stock market manipulation and the operation of a boiler room as part of a penny stock scheme. Belfort served 22 months in jail as part of a plea deal in which he testified against several of his fraud scheme's partners and subordinates. In 2007, he authored The Wolf of Wall Street, a memoir that was made into a film of the same name that was released in 2003. Belfort's restitution deal requires him to pay half of his earnings to the 1,513 clients he cheated through 2009 with a total of $110 million in restitution due. The sale of confiscated properties accounted for around $10 million of the $100 million covered by Belfort's victims as of 2013. The Wolf of Wall Street and Catching the Wolf of Wall Street, written by Belfort, have been published in over 40 countries and translated into 18 languages. Number 5. Samuel Israel Samuel Israel III is a former hedge fund manager who co-founded the Bayou Hedge Fund Group in 1996. Israel formed the Bayou Hedge Fund Group in 1996 and served as its CEO, raising $450 million from investors. Bayou and Israel abused these monies for personal gain, conducting a Ponzi scam that was ultimately exposed. Following the dismissal results in 1998, the business established a fictitious accounting firm which they hired to audit themselves in order to maintain a positive image with investors. After pleading guilty to cheating investors in his now bankrupt corporation, Israel was sentenced to 20 years in prison and had to pay $300 million. On April 14, 2008, Israel, who was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison in April 2008, failed to report to jail on June 9, 2008, as 
resurrected. On June 10, 2008, his 2006 GMC Envoy was discovered abandoned on the Bear Mountain Bridge with the words, Suicide is Painless, scrawled in dust on the hood. The title of the movie and TV series, MASH, Israel was suspected of faking his own death in order to escape incarceration, according to police. On July 2, 2008, Israel was traced down to a campsite near Granville, Massachusetts, and surrendered to authorities. As a result, on July 15, 2009, he was sentenced to an extra two years in jail. Number 4. Reed Slatkin Reed Slatkin was a co-founder and early investor of Earthlink, as well as the perpetrator of one of the greatest Ponzi scams in the United States since Charles Ponzi's. Since 1975, Slatkin had been an ordained Scientology priest. He transitioned from full-time preacher to self-employed investor about 1984, and many of his investment customers and victims were Scientologists. Slatkin garnered 593 million dollars from over 800 rich investors between 1986 and 2001. He compensated one set of early investors $279 million on their original $128 million investment, asserting investing success without ever making most of the promised investments using monies from subsequent investors. He also paid millions in fees to pals who served as consultants he was able to keep the plan going until 2001, when an inquiry by the Securities and Exchange Commission brought it to an end. Slatkin pled guilty to mail fraud, wire fraud, money laundering, and obstruction of justice, and was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison on September 2, 2003. Number 3. Enron Enron Corporation, an American energy business located in Houston, Texas, was involved in an accounting controversy. The corporation filed bankruptcy when the news broke in October 2001, and its accounting firm Arthur Anderson, then one of the world's top five audit and accounting firms, was virtually disbanded. Enron was recognized as the worst audit failure at the time, in addition to being the largest bankruptcy reorganization in in U.S. history. After the company's stock price plunged from a high U.S. $90.75 per share in mid-2000 to less than $1 by the end of November 2001, Enron stockholders launched a $40 billion lawsuit. The Securities and Exchange Commission launched an inquiry, and Dynegy, a Houston-based competitor, offered to buy the firm for a cheap price. The transaction fell through though and Enron filed for bankruptcy under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code on December 2, 2001. Until the WorldCom crisis the following year, Enron's $63.4 billion in assets made it the largest corporate bankruptcy in U.S. history. Many Enron executives were charged with various crimes and some were condemned to jail. Number 2. Tyco CEO Dennis Kozlowski Dennis Kozlowski, a former CEO of Tyco International, was convicted in 2005 of offenses including $81 million of unlawful bonuses. Separately, Tyco sued Kozlowski and won, with the court ruling that the $500 million in income and benefits he got between 1997 and 2002 during his period of disloyalty were forfeited back to the firm under New York's faithless servant theory. Kozlowski was tried on two occasions. The first attempt ended in a mistrial because one of the jurors was reportedly intimidated by the public after making an OK sign towards Kozlowski's counsel. In addition, Kozlowski and Swartz were forced to pay reparations totaling $134 million. Kozlowski was also fined $70 million, with Swartz receiving a $35 million punishment. Both were found guilty of grand theft, fabricating company documents, securities fraud, and conspiracy on 22 accounts. Number 1. Bernie Madoff 
Bernie Madoff, an American fraudster and banker, was the mastermind of the world's biggest Ponzi scam, valued $64.8 billion. He was the chairman of the Nasdaq stock market. At one point, he promoted the spread of electronic trading platforms as well as the notion of paying for order flow, which has been dubbed a legal kickback. Madoff's son Mark and Andrew informed investigators on December 10, 2008, that their father had admitted to them that his firm's asset management business was a giant Ponzi scheme and that he said it was one big lie. The Federal Bureau of Investigation arrested Madoff the next day and charged him with one count of securities fraud. The SEC and the United States had previously investigated his business activities but had not discovered the vast fraud. Madoff acknowledged to the converting his wealth management firm into a gigantic Ponzi scam on March 12, 2009, when he pleaded guilty to 11 federal charges. Thousands of investors lost billions of dollars as a result of the Bernard Madoff investment scandal. Madoff claimed to have started the Ponzi scam in the early 1990s, but an ex-trader testified in court that he had been fabricating documents for Madoff since the early 1970s. Would you risk this kind of scam? Do you think we should have better systems to make the ultra-rich behave more honestly? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!